Ich habe gesagt, ey, 18 Uhr seid ihr nicht auf dem Balkon. Ja, ja, ich guck schon seine YouTube-Videos. <lacht> People always say like money isn't that important, money is not gonna solve your issues until you get a hundred thousand dollar bill from a doctor. Luck is nothing but a form of randomness. So it's actually part of a probability theory of life. Everything really boils down to probability. They call it the probability wave which collapses at the moment, at the instant of observation so what it actually means is nothing is certain until you actually do it so I follow the same principles I just say if you end up having a probability of being successful then what I want is as many shots as possible I need to make a lot of money to be able to help it's it really doesn't matter at one point of time it, it doesn't matter if you have one or two cars or three houses. It, right, yeah. it doesn't matter. So <laughs> the ultimate, I, I call it my ultimate then what, right? So if you ask yourself, what do you want in your life? And then people will start with, I, I want a house. So then what? I want a car. Then what? I want the luxury. Then what? Then what? And if you end up going this road, it's actually either something you created, or someone you created, So, thank you very much for being here. My name is Saigen Yalchin. I live in Dubai since seven years. I graduated actually right here. So, I love this place. It's like my second home. So, I was born in Bremen, in, in the north, and I left probably 10 years ago, and then spent almost four years here. So, I feel with you. I know exactly what it means. And I was a student like you guys. I think most of you guys are studying here, I assume. I might also be wrong, but I had this two euro backpack when I moved to Dubai. It was actually my second startup and it was an experiment. It was the first and then the largest private shopping club in the Middle East. It was fashion. And all I had was this, was this idea. I would just like to start something. I knew this business model was really working, but I didn't know if it's going to work out with me. So I doubted myself a little bit until I realized that all I could lose was probably a bit of time. So what I did is I actually founded Sokkar.com. And Sokkar.com was this fashion store and it actually it grew extremely fast and then we, we merged it with Sook.com which is now the largest e-commerce company in the Middle East. I then moved on to another startup which is called sellanycar.com. Now sellanycar.com is a car buying service which was launched around three years ago and is now the largest used car trader in the country. Without further ado, I actually had this beautiful office when I moved to Dubai. Now this is a restaurant with free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> So I was sitting there eight hours for eight months. And I ordered a salad and a Coke every day. And these people were really nice to me because I used it like an office. That's where I actually raised funds. That's where I hired my first team. <coughs> Lying on both sides. I told the investors I have the team. I told the team I have the investment. So this kind of balance act kind of came together in March 2010, when both of, the, both of the sides actually saw the real truth, which was a balance. Obviously, it was transparent. I told them with the condition of having that, you can join. But they joined actually two months before I actually could pay them. This is actually sellanycar.com's office. 
Not anymore, but this is where we worked for one and a half years. It is a very, very ugly warehouse. I think it still looks the same, like that left part. We, we fixed the toilet on the right. But in general, I made it a habit to actually never start Gucci, right? Never start fancy. And keep your team right there for as long as possible. And I tell always my, my team members, never grow up. Remain a startup as long as possible because you have something, I'm gonna talk about it in a separate slide, but you have something really special as a startup. And that's the flexibility and the mindset you should not lose as long as possible. Who knows this machine? Like I got to know it for a long time. This machine is really loud, right? So this is how our office looked. And you see that arrow on top? That's our IT department. So we basically tried to work within a construction site. It didn't really matter how fancy it is or how much fresh air we really had. It was about accomplishing something. We were six people. And we, as, I mean, the, the IT director one time said, you know what, I think it's not really healthy. Because the, the car was just, the exhaust was just next to his desk. And I said, okay, maybe I get into legal trouble. So we moved. I'm showing you this because I want you to get the mindset we worked with all the time. It's not about how dirty we are. It's about how perseverance plays a big role. So this is how Salani car looks now. So it's a 100,000 square foot yard. It is the largest car trade, and this is just one of our locations. So you need to come up with something which really solves the problem in the market. And the good part is they are not startups. And that's why we win. This mindset actually takes you there. So what we've done is we've created a system which is actually a marketplace. So when you drive in with your car to one of our locations, at the same time there is a live auction running where hundreds and thousands of dealers are bidding on your car. So this live auction actually is able to reduce the normal 87 days of turnover time to 12 minutes. Now, I'm not here to promote sellanycar.com, I'm here to promote entrepreneurship. And I want you to just understand how we thought and how we are thinking and maybe it will help you guys. So, when you look at an idea, or when I look at an idea, I always ask myself six questions. Obviously, when you pass these six questions, you then go into deeper analysis. But in general, every idea I looked at had to solve these six questions. And the first one is, do you solve a problem? Do you really solve a pain point in the market? Is there something which is suboptimal and no one is realizing it? And probably you can do something about it by bringing in something new. For us, it was technology, the power of connecting people real time and bringing efficiency into the market. So that's the number one. The second one is, can you profitably scale this business, right? Profitability is really something we should look at. A lot of entrepreneurs, especially venture backed, venture capital backed entrepreneurs, postpone that question as long as possible. Sellanycar.com is profitable. It doesn't mean we don't need venture capital to grow even further, but it makes you as an entrepreneur extremely strong and actually makes you credible because profitability means you have a viable business. And profitable companies are the only companies who add value, proven value to the markets. So think about the profitability, think about how you can scale that. The third question, and it doesn't matter in which order you ask these, is, is it the right timing, right? A lot of great ideas exist, but being too early or being too late is nothing different than being wrong. There are certain ideas in this world which are actually really, really good, but they're just too early, right? Spare parts for flying cars, for example, that would be very early. <laughs> Another question is, and it doesn't really mean it, 
it's impossible, but <coughs> check the regulatory showstoppers. Like, is it legal what you're trying to do? Don't wait for the governments to change laws. Some companies have been able to change laws over time, but in general, I would not go into illegal businesses. And uh, because you will actually fail at the second question. Is it profitably scalable? Because the minute you're trying to scale, that's when all the legal questions will come up. And definitely when you try to raise external funding. Another question I ask myself is the monetization strength of the business. That actually means the unit economics, right? You can sell a lot of free stuff and scale your business. But you, if your customer acquisition cost is extremely high and there's no way you can reduce it or you need like a billion transactions a month to say, OK, now I made a dollar. That question is usually overseen or overlooked by a lot of entrepreneurs. They don't really care about the unit economics, but that's the core viability of your business. What's your customer acquisition cost and how can you over time reduce it and make it profitable? Last but not least, you yourself, are you passionate about the business? There are a lot of great ideas, but you don't really identify yourself with it. So if you get to that point where you say, uh, oh, everything else is fine, but I let someone else do it, it's probably not going to work. So you really need to love your own product and your services. That's why fashion, automotive, electronics, there's a lot of competition. Because a lot of people work and love to work in those industries. It's called passion entrepreneurship. That's basically where everyone goes. But when you go into, I don't know, toilet paper, production plants, I don't know who ever said, like, that's my passion, right? <laughs> but that's where you have less competition. It's not because that business doesn't make sense. It's because that question of passion is usually missing for most normal people. So I'm going to talk about just bullet points here because we don't have too much time. One thing I would like you to ignore is right, th right there, common sense. Common sense is probably one of the most dangerous things for entrepreneurs. Right? You basically go and, and say, oh, that can't work, or that's common sense. That's obviously wrong. That's obviously not going to work. Right? When you start having prejudice about something, you're actually just going to be one of those who never started anything. And I teach at the university myself, and I ask always two questions. The first question is, who of you guys never had a business idea? And no one says anything, because everyone at one point of time said, I think I have a business idea. Right? Everyone thinks about it. But when you then ask, the second question is, who of you made a business out of that? Maybe 1%. Right? And that's where common sense comes in. Like, oh, I'm not the best one to do it. I, am, I don't have the money. Or some other excuse marathon. Like, you will hear all types of excuses. But there are actually six ways to get there. I'm not going to go into these details, but in general, get rid of this, get rid of everything which stops you, this, this BS between you and the business. This is, I believe, the most important word in our company, speed. Everything we do, everything we do is fast. Because as I said in the video, it's all about probability. So the more shots you have, the better. So just go, get something done. If it doesn't work, go to the next. But be fast. And this is why we win. Because all the big companies, they don't have this. And they can't have it. They can't have the flexibility. So we have an idea, we try to implement it the next day and see what happens. Right? So for me, this is my favorite word. So if you ask me, that's even part of my email address. Now that was actually, 
I think 12 hours ago. <laughs> and I'll tell you why you saw that just now. I was at this university, or I don't know, business school, and I looked around and I loved everyone who was here, but there's always some person you really look up to. I want you to, to actually look, don't say who that is, but I know everyone has someone, it doesn't have to be in this room, it has to be in your circle, you really look up to for some characteristic that person has, right? And then ask yourself why you really like that person no, in terms of business mind, right? Or something relevant for your career. And when you identify that, just try to copy, make it a habit. And I tell you what, what I really learned is practice today is the habit of tomorrow. So basically, just copy people you really, really admire because you will become like them. And it doesn't mean you copy every single characteristic. It's just something which is really successful or really, really admirable. That's something you copy and do it. And do it probably for the, the next three months straight and you will see that becomes a habit and you become that person for that specific characteristic. And you do that with the five best people in your circle you'll become the best version of yourself. That doesn't mean you're a copy of someone. You took the best of the best. This is why I love good habits and practice. You, you actually force yourself into becoming that person you want to become. And that's all about entrepreneurship. I just thought these people are the best in what they do. So you copy that characteristic. If you don't know that person you admire, Either try to get in touch, if it's not possible, try to read about them or educate yourself about them. Because you could be that person in that specific characteristic. Last but not least, this is the question I asked myself two years ago. And I thought it was a very simple question, right? It's like, okay, why do you work 25 hours a day? I don't know, I need, I need money. Why do you need money? Because I'll buy a house, right? Then what? A car, then what? Another car, then what? A better car. So you go on, it's a lot of irrelevant stuff. And then you go on and ask yourself, then what, then what, then what, then what. Do that for yourself, don't do it now. But ask yourself this question until the end. It's not that easy. For me, it was something or someone I have created. Only that. I mean, someone you've created, obviously, is obvious. Something you've created doesn't only mean <coughs> you have to be an entrepreneur in life and create a company, right? But something which really survives you, leave an impact on this, in this world. It doesn't have to be huge. You don't have to be the next Gandhi, or Muhammad Ali, or whoever these legends are. But if you leave an impact in this world, that's probably when you're really happy and you reach your own then what. For me, it was those two areas. And that's what I love about entrepreneurship. If you see something wrong, an entrepreneur doesn't stop. He or she stands up, makes it happen, and doesn't stop until it's done. And all I do is talk about what I've just talked to you. It's basically telling you what entrepreneurship is and how you can actually get to where you belong. Thank you very much, guys. fastest growing company in the Middle East. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of further international growth? 
I mean, definitely regionally. So we believe we are the car buying service of the Arab world and uh, not only the GCC. So expansion into geographically speaking and second of all, uh, also the product expansion. So we believe we are now in a very important industry, which is the automotive industry. And there are so many complementary models and business units around it mm -hmm. that we can actually build a huge empire. Well, thank you very much for joining the conference. I really like your speech. and. Appreciate I hope it was a great time for you too. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yep. One question. Yes. German or English? German or English, doesn't matter. Okay. Hi, ich bin Louis. Louis. War eine super Rede. War Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.